the last video we have learned that coefficient of thermal expansion is the fractional changes in the length due to the changes in the temperature. So, so our coefficient of thermal coefficient to our coefficient of thermal expansion is the delta L by L by delta T. Delta L by L by delta T. And the unit of the coefficient of thermal expansion is per degree Celsius. So here we do not have any unit because this part is proportional to strain and it do not have any unit. So coefficient of thermal expansion will be per unit change. Okay. Now to solve this problem, where right, we need to consider uniform temperature rises from room temperature 25 degrees Celsius to 50 degrees Celsius, and we have to determine axial reaction developing the structure. Okay. So here the uh, uniform temperature rises means throughout the member, the temperature rises from 25 degrees Celsius to 50 degrees Celsius. And if there is a uniform temperature rises, then remember there will be only axial pressure. Now here we have to identify, we have to calculate how much axial force is developing the structure. Now here you just see, we you know the strain quantity is your delta L by L. So here if you consider here, delta L by L is coming alpha times delta T. So this part is your strain and we know the stress is your E times epsilon. From there we can identify the stress. The stress is equal to E times alpha times delta T. Now once you know how much stress is acting, then we can identify how much axial force is developing. The axial force will be stress times the area. Multiply with the area, we can identify the axial force. Okay. So the equation for the axial force will be AE alpha times delta T. AE alpha times delta T. So delta T is basically is a minus T i. So this axial force basically will create support reaction. This axial force, this axial force will basically create support reaction. So here from this equation, we can calculate how much axial force or how much reaction, axial reaction is developing in the system. Next, we are going to discuss if there is a non-uniform temperature rises. For example, at the bottom we have 50 degrees Celsius, at the top we have 25 degrees Celsius, and initial temperature is 20 degrees Celsius. Then, how much temperature and how much axial force is developing, and how much bending moment is developing in the systems. And we also can calculate if the temperature rises, how much, how much deformation, how much deformation is occurring in the system. So now, if the beam if the beam subjected to non uniform temperature rises, for example, at bottom we have temperature, at bottom we have one temperature, 40 degrees Celsius, at the top we have 30 degrees Celsius, okay, then mean temperature is 35 degrees here. You'll observe this member is subjected to axial deformation, okay, as well as your bending deformation, okay. So here in this member, the beam will, here in this case, here in this case, the beam will experience axial force. As well as bending at the end. Now, here we are going to see how much bending moment and axial force are developed due to non uniform temperature changes. Here we have the beam, we have the beam, and at the bottom we have 40 degrees Celsius, at top we have 30 degrees Celsius, and the room temperature is 27 degrees Celsius. Now, here we are going to see how much axial force is going to develop and how much bending moment is going to develop. Axial force will develop due to the average temperature changes from the room temperature. So here, room temperature is 27 degrees Celsius, and average temperature here is 35 degrees Celsius. So from 27 to 35 degree temperature changes is there, and due to that, the member will experience the axial reaction or axial forces. And uh, and at the bottom we have TB and at the top we have TT and due to this temperature difference the beam is going to experience bending moment. Okay, 
now we are going to see how we can calculate the axial force in the bending moment developing due to the temperature changes developing due to the non uniform temperature changes now here what we are doing we are considering a segment that is saying pqrs okay and here a b is a neutral axis and we are measuring the temperature at a distance y and we are naming it as a mn okay now if the a non uniform temperature rises here we have 40 degrees celsius and here we have 40 degrees celsius then the beam is, the beam is subject to bending like this okay and if the beam is bent like this then we can say this part is a p dash q dash Okay, then this part we can say P dash Q dash R dash S dash. Okay, and here the AB neutral axis, A dash B dash, and the MN, MN here going to be represented by M dash N dash, okay, which is at a distance of Y from the neutral axis. Now, if we consider the strain, just see strain, we can write as your m dash n dash minus mn by the mn. How much length changes? Okay. That is your m dash n dash minus mn, and by the mn, that is your strain. Again, we can say that m dash n dash. Again, we can say that mn. That is equal to AB. So here we can write M dash N dash minus AB by M dash N dash minus AB, AB by AB. Now, since AB is a neutral axis, then after changes, AB will be your AB dash, but the length of the neutral axis will be the same. So here, AB, A dash B dash will be the same as your AB. Since in the neutral axis, we do not experience any tension of the compression so there will not be any changes in the length and for that reason a dash b dash will be equal to ab so here we can write the strain that quantity strain is equal to m dash n dash minus a dash b dash by the a dash b dash okay now here m dash n dash this point we can write your rho times Rho plus y, rho plus y, my delta theta. Okay, so here m dash n dash your rho plus y and delta theta. Okay, and a dash b dash, you can add your rho delta theta. Okay, so rho is your radius of the curvature. Here, rho is your radius of the curvature. Okay, now. If you simplify, you will observe the strain that is equal to y by the slope, which is y is the point at which we are measuring the temperature, or you can say we are measuring the strain due to the temperature rises. So here we got the strain that is equal to y by rho, rho is your base of curvature. Now again, we know the strain quantity that is L del by L and we call alpha times delta T. Okay. And again, we will observe this delta T we can represent like this. We are going to see in the next slide that how this delta T we can represent like this. Okay. Now here, if the strain is your alpha times delta T and if you are, if you are able to write it like this format, okay, then here you can see Strain is equal to y by rho, okay, or rho, which is our radius of curvature, is y by epsilon, okay. Again, consider these two equations. Here we can write that m by ei is equal to 1 by rho, or m is equal to ei by the rho, okay, so m is equal to ei by rho. Again, rho we know that is your is equal to y by epsilon so y is your here and epsilon value is your alpha 
TB minus TT by D times Y. So here Y, Y is going to cancel out. So rho that is equal to your T by alpha times TB minus TT. Okay. Now again, we know that that m is equal to e i by the row okay and that is equal to e i by d times alpha times t b minus t t okay this part we will do this part so here we can find m is equal to e i by d alpha times t b minus t t okay this way we can find the moment for the beam which is subjected to non-uniform temperature rise so now here we are going to see how we can write delta t which is this one okay now for that what we have to do we have to consider the beam and here we are measuring the distance of y and here at distance of y we have the temperature t y that is equal to the mean temperature here the mean temperature here plus t b minus t t by the d that means Change in the temperature due to unit change in the depth. Tb minus Tt by D that is your change in temperature or depth times the y. So here this part is going to give you the temperature and distance of y. Okay. Now here you can identify by the delta T. So delta T is your Ui minus Tm, Ui minus Tm. Okay, that is equal to Tb minus Kt by D times the y. So this way, this way you can find the delta T. Okay, now here this part you can represent graphically here. So here we have the room temperature, and this is your Tt temperature at the top of the beam, and here temperature at the bottom of the beam. Okay, now here this temperature changes. We are assuming okay changes. In a linear fashion, so here we can find the mean temperature. Mean temperature is your Tb plus Tt by 2. Okay. Now, due to this non uniform changes in the temperature, the member is going to subject it to axial force as well as your bending. Okay. Now, this axial force. Will be caused by the changes in the mean temperature with respect to the room temperature. Okay, so changes in the mean temperature with respect to room temperature will cause the axial force in the member. Okay, and temperature difference between the bottom and the top. Temperature difference between the bottom and the top. Bottom and the top is going to decide the bending moment. Which is going to develop due to the non uniform temperature angles. Okay. So already we have discussed that strain, the strain that is equal to y by the rho. So from here we can find the rho, that is the y by epsilon. Rho is, rho, is, rho is your rho is your radius of curvature. The strain quantity, if you put the value of strain quantity, that is your alpha times Tb minus Tt. 5d times y and this y y is going to cancel out so you will get rho you will get rho that is equal to t by alpha times tb minus tt okay again we know that from the equation m by i that will be e by rho from that you can find the m is equal to ei by rho and if you put the value of rho here you know, observe that moment which is going to develop that is your ei by d alpha times tb by Minus t will be minus t t. Okay, and for your changes in the mean temperature with respect to room temperature, that is going to cause your axial force in the systems, and that you can write as your E A alpha n delta t. So here, if we compare these two equation, you will observe the similarity in this equation. Here for axial force, that is the Ea alpha times delta t, and here Ei by d, 
alpha times delta t. Here, this delta t is the temperature difference between the top and the bottom, the bottom and the top. And here, the temperature difference is your, is your variation of the mean temperature with respect to the room temperature. Variation of the mean temperature with respect to the room temperature. Okay. Now we are going to solve one example problem to find the axial force developed in the system as well as bending moment developed in the system. So here we are going to see axial reaction in the support as well as bending moment developed in the support. Here we already have learned that that the axial force developed in the beam can be represented. Axial force developed due to, due to the temperature rise can be represented as your Ea alpha times delta T. Here, this delta T is the changes in the mean temperature with respect to the room temperature. Okay. So here, A is your given value. P, 200 GPS, so 200 meter to the 9 Pascal. Alpha is your 12 or minus 6 per degree Celsius and temperature changes here 35 minus 27. So 35 is your mean temperature that is your 40 plus 30 by 2 and 27 degree Celsius is your room temperature. Okay, now if you put all the value, you'll observe that axial force developed in your system that is your 384 kilo newton. Now to consider the main movement. Which is going to develop in the beam that value can be written as your EI by D times alpha times delta T. Here, delta T is the temperature changes from bottom to top or top to bottom. Okay. So E value is given to us, I value also is given to us, alpha value is given to us, D here we are considering 200 depth, 200 mm depth, so 0.2. And temperature changes is your 40 degree minus 30 degree. Okay, now if we put all the value and do the multiplication, we observe the moment which is developing in this beam is your 6 kilonewton meter. And this moment is developing due to the non uniform temperature rises in the beam. Okay, now this force we can represent graphically like this the axial force here 384, here 384, and moment which is developing here. There we go. Okay. Next, we are going to see how we can solve a beam to obtain the heat friction occurring in the beam. As well as, we are going to see what is the surface diagram, bending diagram for the beam. 